G'day ladies and gents, welcome back to the show where I develop a survival adventure game from the ground up in C with an engine that uses nothing but the Win32 API. Now, if you're new around here and you know a little bit about programming, you may be sitting there wondering, why don't you use something more modern, you fucking Fred Flintstone looking ass? <laughs> And an answer to your question, we will have just popped up on screen right there. Go ahead and cue that bad boy up next. But I'm guessing most of you aren't programmers. Maybe all you want to do is just see a man violently pursue his goals. If that's the case. Hello everyone and welcome to this month's indie game development log. Wait, that's a VEC4. Rotation is just pitch your role, right? It's only got three components, right? <laughs> <laughs> Quaternions, eh? Uh, even the name just sounds intimidating as shit. Well, good thing there's a little something in this world called Google, aka the sole thing responsible for the knowledge of my entire career. Yeah, I dropped out of uni in the first week. <laughs> to pursue my passions as a barista. Man, that's deep. What you're looking at right now is something called Quaternion Multiplication. Or rather, you're looking at a certain representation of a specific motion happening on a four-dimensional sphere being represented in our three-dimensional space. I'm gonna take a seat for this one. <laughs> I understand child mortality was high and all three children made it. I'm proud of you, Fred. I'm proud of you, Fred. Did Barney do just as well? I hope he did. All right, so my understanding of a quaternion is you have a 3D object and you want to rotate this object. We knock it up a dimension in the 4D, which is really a four dimensional hypersphere. We stereographically project it down into 3D space. That gives us a normal 3D sphere right here. And then we've got these four components. Depending on what we alter, that'll alter the rotation of this sphere. So we're increasing J as this line increases the perpendicular circle is going to rotate in that direction. Eventually this 3D sphere that we're viewing is just going to fold out to a flat plane. And to prevent that, what we do is we actually have another quaternion, which is the inverse of the first quaternion, and that'll essentially cancel out any of the fuckery that happens and just describe a normal 3D rotation of this sphere. At least that's just my very shallow understanding of it after a couple days worth of research. But that's all I need. Um, if you'd like to visualize quaternions yourself, then I'd highly recommend looking at this website. It was made by Ben Eder, and the lessons were done by 3 blue one brown absolute chad. Just like one big interactive learning experience, which is amazing. And so that's over and done with, the boys and I decided to go on a cheeky little overnight hike. And I thought I'd reward myself with my newfound mathematical knowledge. I feel like we're gonna need a bit of a raft across this, eh? I'm gonna get my shit out of this. Oh. Oh. Back to the video though, here's what I actually need from quaternions. I need a way of taking this quaternion rotation and applying it to a 4x4 transformation matrix. Ryan clued me into the handmade math single header library a while ago, so I did a bit of perusing that. Yoink. Could I just have skipped straight to this step without even bothering to understand quaternions? Yes, but um... Why the fuck didn't I just do that? I then spent the next two days wrangling with Blender, trying to figure out how the hell to get my animation data read in properly and transform the bones properly. Ah! Yeah, it was just one of those moments where you don't really put in the effort to try and fix a problem, and instead you just spend hours beating around the bush randomly hoping it'll fix itself. And I eventually gave up and was like, yo, Blender can go suck a dick, all my homies hate Blender. I'm definitely not the one at fault here. I switched to a different 3D editor. Ooh, did somebody say who? Houdini. I've been working my way through Houdini slowly but surely and what I've actually managed to do is write up a exporter in Python that dumps it directly into a .tsm file, right? I spent a few days getting that running, getting bones up and running, all that kind of stuff and you know I had some success to an extent. Perfect. Look at that. 
I got all the vertices being dumped into a file. And it was quite nice. And we got run in the game. Back in the game. For the fifth time. But there's just so much more. So much goddamn more. That goes into a file like that. So... I've kind of been defeated. It's just a temporary retreat. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving up. I ain't no bitch. Someone in chat today, they linked this. And I've just had a look over it. I'm like, holy shit, this just does literally everything I need. Why don't I just stop being a stubborn little cunt and just use this? Because it's got everything. But there's catch. Only supported in Houdini Core and Houdini FX versions. In order to export to GLTF, I am going to need to cough up this much money. So it's either I cop this or spend the entire next month trying to figure out how to export to TSM. And quite frankly, we're going to stop there and sleep on the idea because that would be the right thing to do in this situation. I totally wasn't forced to sleep on the idea because I didn't have enough money in my account and couldn't go through with it. I woke up the next day and I don't really want to cough that up. What you gotta realize is five days ago, right? When I said Blender can go suck a dick and that I hate Blender, all my homies hate Blender. I was actually being sarcastic this entire time. It's back the goddamn Blender. Houdini, <laughs> suck my balls. I never liked you anyway. And we're gonna be using GLTF to export and then we're gonna take all the GLTF data, look through it all and just. I don't really wanna downgrade back to Ron, you know? Well, at the same time, Ron's always been my boy. Ron is not big Ron. Ron is little Ron. And a little Ron is going to be used to figure out how GLTF works. It's a little disheartening to be working for five days straight on something and then completely go back on all that progress. But that's just game development. And more specifically, me being dumb. Those are the basic bones in. Now it's just a matter of exporting the GLTF and trying to read that data. Alrighty, look at all this yummy, yummy data. You know, we got rotation here, how sexy. They are very small values, but that's okay, that's okay. We can work with that, maybe. Probably not. I also need the weights. Oh, we haven't done any weight painting. Uh, how do you do weight painting again? Oh, too easy. Now the next thing is trying to figure out how to decode all this binary data. That might be a little bit tricky there. I'm gonna have to take a seat for this one. This is gonna be probably not too hard because the docs are amazing. Like, look at this. Look how goddamn sexy this is. GLTF, what the doc? An overview of the basics of the GL transmission format. The GLTF 2.0. So for example, if we actually just uh, export this as a GLB and do a cheeky little hex dump, we should be able to read the string aspects of it. Alrighty. So it's still stored in JSON, which is kind of fucking annoying. Kind of pissing me off, bro. That's fine though. So it literally just takes all the JSON data. You're really gonna make me search through a whole ass JSON file? I don't know how to pass a JSON file. What do you think I am? Yeah, so I learned how to pass a JSON file. Okay, so we've got the buffer. We have got the buffer, boys. Woo! Yeah, all right, that works. That is all our data. If all goes well, when I hit this F5 button, we should have all the position data and all the normal data read into our TSM. Not seeing any crashes, which is good. That's excellent. That's always what you want. Let's check. Can I get a drum roll, please? We have 639 bytes, of which those vertices look like genuine valid data, ladies and gents. Look at that. There's only one way to test whether this is the right data or not, boys. That way being that we have a knitted TSM from GLTF file. We are compiled, ready to go. All I have to do is hit the F5 button and we will see if little Ron has made the journey. This is our very first attempt. My boy! Oh, my ass. Did legs yesterday, I'm just pain. But I am a little bitch that skips leg day, you know what I mean? We aren't gonna be looking like Big Ron if we skip leg day. Nah, uh I don't know why so many different songs cycle through my head throughout the day. Like, Hey Ya's been stuck in my head for almost a week now. But it's just come and gone, you know? Like, I try my best not to get distracted by songs by listening to White Noise, and the songs still come up. It's like, you can't fucking win. Yeah, I should really, like, organize it into, like, one and a half hour sprints instead of just, like, one big three hour one. Because by the last hour of the three hours, I'm really not that sharp. Like, I can still do it, but I think it'd be better off if I just went, like, one and a half hours, stop streaming, came back, one and a half hours, stop streaming, came back, maybe another one and a half hours. I think that would actually be a whole lot better. Three one and a half hour blocks instead of one three hour block. Overall, I'm getting more work done 
and it's more efficient. Fuck, I'm smart. For those of you who have absolutely zero clue what I'm talking about, I've started live streaming my work sessions again over at twitch.tv forward slash Randy. I actually quit live streaming a while ago to help me focus on work more, but then I realized I can just stream without looking at chat at all and just kind of sit there like I usually do. But except this time, instead of me just sitting there in silence, I'm kind of talking to the void, I guess. But then there's actually people on the other side of it, which is kind of weird. Um, Basically, don't come and watch me, it's fucking boring. Also, if you've got Amazon Prime, I'd really appreciate it if you could chuck a cheeky little Prime Gaming subscription over there. It's completely free for you, and I get $2.50 right out of the pockets of the underpaid Amazon workers. If you do end up doing that, you can go to randy.gg prime, link your Twitch account, and you can actually get a free membership. That'll give you access to all my source code. You'll get access to the crack den on our Discord, which kind of has like a journal that I just post random shit into daily. Okay, well, not daily, but I'm trying to- Alright, that's this blog done. Much love. Bye-bye. Alright, that should be absolutely everything. One final compile. One final run. Is it going to work? Let's see. Moment of truth. It's the exact same. It's still just equally as fucked. Now, issue at the moment is, well, uh, Little Ron doesn't exactly look too well. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be fixing today. <laughs> Hang on a minute. We've definitely got UVs in this vertex. <laughs> oh, fuck. How'd I miss that? I literally remember saying, no, we don't have things yet. Let's not put them back on. And I did this and then I just deleted it and I was like, no. Yes! Let's fucking go, baby! Oh, God. Damn, that took some time. Oh, that feels good. Finally, Ron is back in action in his full little form. All right, well, glad that's fixed. I fucking hate how hard they're trying to push Edge. Like the only reason I use Chrome is so I can have all my bookmarks synced. I want bookmarks on my mobile device as well. Look at this folder, for example. David Guetta ends racism. This record is in honor of George Floyd. Like this is just life changing, you know? And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace when already things are so difficult. So, shout out to his family. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see why that's in the life-changing folder. What a way to start the day. Um, now this is gonna be the tricky part. <laughs> We're finally using quaternions. Well, I'm gonna assume that it works. Uh, that'd be kind of cool if it did. All right, moment of truth. Is it gonna stay the same? That it does. Now, for my next trick, I want him to face me. So I would tug on K. All right, so you put K to one. Is it gonna work? <sighs> At least it's kind of worked. <laughs> Look how alpha he is. To get Ron facing the camera like this, I used trial and error, which is a little strange since I thought my knowledge of Quaternions was fine. Something felt a little bit off. I didn't know quite what. Yo, is he foreshadowing right now? Yeah, yeah he is. Oh, man. I wonder what it could be. But at least we know it works. That's kind of cool. Wow, Quaternions, everyone. It only took us a few weeks. <laughs> the next step was to reconstruct all the bones given to us from the .json GLTF file. There we go. Spine one, parent negative one, spine two, parent zero, which is this one. Spine three, parent one, which is that one. Easy clap. Whoop. Now it's time for the challenging part. By challenging, I mean, I've never really gotten to this point and succeeded yet. Compute the skinning matrix and that is gonna be a lot of fun now that i think i know what's going on maybe all right let's skin some goddamn vertices hey all right 
right, we got burn data in the vertices. They are in the vertices, and that means we can access them in the shaders, and that means we can transform each vertex accordingly. Little Ron has been skinned. I think that should be the last of this TSM file. How many lines did I just write? Cheeky little 335 lines, not too bad. I wish I had a time lapse on this file. That would have been great. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to compute the skinning matrix. I'm just following all this and trying to figure it out. I've just been stuck on this for the longest time. It was the whole reason that I gave up and switched to Houdini and then switched back. And I've repassed this and now I'm back up to where I started probably about two weeks ago. So I forgot to hit the record button, but basically for the past hour and a half, remember how I copied that uh, handmade math quaternion code and I was like, well, I'm going to assume that it works. It took me a long time to figure this out, but quaternions and handmade math are W, X, Y, Z. We're using X, Y, Z, W. Like, why do we have to swap those two around, you know? Because it makes sense to just use a VEC4 for a quaternion and not define a whole new thing for a quaternion because it's just, it's just a VEC4 at the end of the day. Why are we swapping shit around? But that's fixed now. If I actually do what I was going to do, 0 0.77 and this at 0 0.77, I think that might give us the rotation we want. Yeah, look at that. I know quaternions. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. That feels good. Not gonna lie. You think what I'm thinking be one? I'm thinking we can have animations in by the end of the day. I'm thinking we're actually gonna end this video on a high note, just in time. Cause look at this. I've got four days and two hours to get this video out because this video is sponsored by Data Camp. All right, before you skip through this bad boy, I want you to hear me out for a sec. Let's say that you don't like your current job and you wanna do something that you'll enjoy more because well, <laughs> why the hell wouldn't you? This right here is roughly how long your working life will be. And it better be something you enjoy. Maybe the general idea of data interests you. Collecting it, visualizing it, predicting it. Well, guess what, bucko? With Data Camp, you can literally build a career from the ground up in just a few months. With no prior knowledge, a few minutes each day, and a bit of commitment. Just pick a track that you'd like to go down, work through the courses, and at the end of it, you can actually get a certification that'll help you land that job. Slap that bad boy on your resume. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It may seem like a daunting task, but if you make a habit out of just cranking out one quick little five minute lesson each day, then you'll be there in no time. And that'll be piss easy, cause guess what? Their entire platform feels goddamn amazing. Install it on your phone, work through the lessons on the go, or even crank out the entire thing on your computer in a couple weeks. Whatever feels best for you. You don't actually have to install any software, it's all built directly into the platform. This course has literally given me a VM inside a web browser to do all this. Excuse me? That's sick. There's something like 350 courses designed by experts actually working in the industry. Data manipulation with pandas. That sounds kind of cute, not gonna lie. What is data science? Data science for business. This actually sounds pretty interesting. Let's go. Suddenly, we have a very complete picture about everyone who purchased a car in the last year. Their ages, their likes and dislikes, their friends and family. <laughs> Knowledge is power, I guess. Uh, to be fair, I think everyone at this point knows that their data is just out there everywhere and it's quite easy to access. And while it may be pretty daunting to know that uh, Mr. Zuck is always has his eyes on you and knows all about your personal interests and whatnot, um, I guess if you can learn how to manipulate data yourself, then you can use it for good and not evil and forcing ads in other people's face. In all seriousness, big thanks to Data Camp for sponsoring this video. It's good to have a genuine sponsorship for once and something that I can actually talk about and go do and use myself as opposed to having a whip Bazaar out and ram a fucking mobile game down your throat. You like big robot? I'm glad I was analyzed and chosen by Data Camp to do this sponsor. And I hope you boys and girls can get as much out of it as I do. So use my link in the description below. Invest in yourself. All the first chapters of Data Camp's courses are completely free. So go see if there's something that tickles your pickle. All right, after that quick commercial break, it's back to pain and suffering. Take it away, Mr. Pass Randall. All right, boys, the clock is ticking. And you know what that means? Now is our time. Now is our time to shine. Two months have been leading up to this very moment. The full implementation of 3D animated rendering. Everything's skinned, everything's burned, everything's excellent. It's just a matter 
of multiplying the right matrices in the right order. This bad boy right here. So let's do it. So when we press R, nothing should happen. But he's been moved down a shit ton. I can taste it. It's right there. It's right fucking there. What am I doing? When I press R, Ron should not move. Correct. Let's do a very clear rotation of the bone. All right, so let's try and get this working. Um, so that might be like a bit of an issue. I would love to be able to rotate this exactly 90 degrees. Hell yeah. Oh, this is so annoying. Well, I tried my best. I really did. I know there's a way to do it and I'm sure it's easy. I've just got to actually figure out the math for it. Like, I feel like I'm literally just one hour away from fixing it, but I also don't know. Like, I could just be wasting my time for the next two days and then not get this video out on time. So, yeah. I ain't a bitch. I ain't giving up that easily. Joint matrix is equal to the inverse of the global transform times it by the global joint transform times it by the inverse bind matrix. Why? I'm done. I'm going on my afternoon walk. Can we carbon date your bones? Freddy, Fred, Fred, Flintstone. All that's left of you is them gummies. They used to say yabba dabba do. Now they say yabba dabba. Yeah, his, his dick and balls are literally being twisted 180 degrees.